All righty, good morning. My name is Kyle Houchins. I'm a tech and a trainer for McNeil. And uh, this is Getting Started Rhino for Windows. And what we're going to do today is build uh, a little hand tool. I've got this wrench that I wanted to build. And um, I think it's kind of a cool project. It's simple when you look at it. And let's just go ahead and get started like I always get started, which is to um, bring in a reference image. And we're basically going to build this thing. And this is actually a diabolically complicated little piece, given how simple it is. Um, and we're going to talk about kind of the common traps and things that you would run into if you were to build something like this. And if you could hold the thing in your hand, like I'm holding right now, um, it, it has some interesting little details here. This, this section down here, is uh, is essentially an extruded part, but then it's got this really kind of interesting little blend going on here where it actually, it blends in, but not quite. And then it has a little fillet, but then this blends in, um, you know, seamlessly. And then it's got a nice little a detail around here. And then this end actually is kind of integral into the handle, but then it has, if we look at the, if we look at the side view, um, it has uh, actually this end is has a little bend in it and a common trap would be as you're as you're trying to learn how to do this stuff and getting started um, figuring out how to you know begin your nerves journey so to speak um, you would uh, you would be tempted to try and build that bend um, in this case we're going to actually build this thing flat and then bend it later so that we get the benefit of of uh, of ease and then leverage the power of some of the UDT tools later on uh, to get to get what we want. So let's go ahead and get started. And this thing is about seven inches long. So the first thing I'm going to do is just establish some scale by starting a center, starting a, <clears throat> a line at zero and making it seven units long and then giving myself a little return. And that way I know that this distance right here, right, between here and here is seven inches. And so I'm going to just position the end of this thing right at zero. And I'm going to rotate it using the rotate command from zero. And I'm going to rotate it holding down shift. And then I'm going to scale from zero. And I'm going to just drag it down until it gets to about there and then i'll just double check it and say yeah that's that's close enough for a demo among friends so we've got this thing positioned let's go ahead and throw it on a layer i'm going to change this layer here and then i'm going to go to uh i'm going to actually take this and i'm going to drag it out of the modeling envelope and the reason that i do that and i i, I tend to always do this with my models is i can't stand this where the where the the image is halfway stuffed through the model so what i like to do is just pull it out of the modeling envelope because from the top view it's still positioned correctly but from every other view i can focus on my model instead of the image so let's stick this up here i'm going to change this object layer i'm going to change this name and then the last thing i want to do is i want to knock the contrast down a little bit because if i were to draw over this you can see it's very difficult to see your line work. So we're going to go to the materials tab. You can see that when the object is selected, the the image picture frame picture image is selected. And we're just going to come down here to the transparency. We're going to crank it up a little bit so that it's more transparent. And <clears throat> I'm vaguely centered over the center line here with this image. I may I may need to adjust one way or the other. There we go. Don't know why I got rid of that, but I did. Um, it's back. And then let's go up here to the the layer stack and let's go ahead and lock this. And then that way it's it is now purely a reference image and it's out of the way. Now the other we need another reference image, which is the side, and I'm gonna bring that in as well. And I'm gonna just let that go down. This is where you can see that bend, and it's not a perfectly orthographic image, so we're gonna have to do a little do a little 
wiggling to get it to do what we want it to do. Uh, I'm going to drop the transparency so I can see through it so that I can place it accurately. And I'm going to try and place it right there. And my image is, I kind of want the bend to go up. So this is going to be a little counterintuitive, but I'm going to start here and I'm going to rotate this way. And you're like, well, wait a minute, your image is over here. You're right. And then I'm going to mirror this image from the center line. And that is going to then allow me to have it the way that I want. All right. Does that make sense? And then I deleted my I deleted my reference line, but let's just go put it back so we can see and make sure that we get our scale correct. Scale from zero. And then we're going to just scale down to there. And then if I go in my side view, looks like I looks like I jacked up my scale from the top. So let's go back up here and unlock this, and then let's scale it. And then this guy will match, more or less. Reference images kind of live in the land of ish unless they have details on them. So it's seven-ish inches long. So let's go to the front. I'm going to move this change object layer, and then I can't hide the layer that I'm currently on, which is what this check mark is. So I'm going to move my check mark up there and then lock this layer. And then that way, my whole model envelope is in good shape and I know what I'm building and where I'm building and all that kind of stuff. All right. Now, cool thing about picture frames or pictures is they are, if I unlock this, just an object. If I, if I drag and tap Alt, I can make a copy of it. I can spin this. I can do whatever I want with it. I can copy, I can make 10 copies. I can array it I can you know do whatever I want with it because it is just an object with an image placed on it so um, that is uh, a super versatile thing if you used background bitmap back from like version three or four uh, before picture frame came out it's picture now in six and it will be picture going forward um, it's uh, it's definitely a little bit more versatile than that that tool was so let's go ahead and lock these and uh, and start digging into this so like I said before, if you analyze this, right, the, the head of this thing where the where the open end is, is we there's two ways we could do this. We could we could build this as its integral part of the handle. And that may be the way that we end up doing this, or we could build it as its own separate piece. Right, I'm just gonna hack this out like this, and that could be, you know, and then try and blend this in later. I think, I think I'm gonna do a hybrid of those two things. I think I'm actually gonna build this integral into the handle, and then I'm gonna use this to leverage this this additional little step here. This is the complicated part right here. Right, this this blend right here that's the and then there's actually a secondary little step right here so this is the this is the tricky area and thinking about this you know because this blend needs to come all the way out to like here this area down in here is the this is the this is the complication zone. So we try to we try to you know mitigate that stuff going forward. We don't want to we don't want to build ourselves into a complicated area if we don't have to. So let's start with the very very simplest thing, which is just trace the outline. Let's just make life easy. Uh, so I'm going to start uh, I'm going to start at zero actually, so that I can uh, be located at the center. And it actually may make my life easier. If I unlock both of these and I grab both of these pictures and I just drag this back so that it's centered over the over the origin, that might make my life a little easier. So I'm going to do that because I try to I try to make this stuff as easy on myself as possible. And the top image is a little misaligned, so I'm going to pull it down and just get it aligned a little bit more centered so that it 
works better. All right, everybody still with me? All right, so let's, uh, this, is, this is the exterior shape. And because this is not entirely orthogonal, we have to kind of play the break a little bit and, and see, you know, where, where we make our decisions as ba you know, based on the image because this is, image has perspective in it. It's not, you know, entirely, entirely useful all the time. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do a rectangle. I'm going to do this from the center. And I'm going to start at zero, even though that doesn't seem to make sense. But I'm going to pull this out so that I know that my handle is dead centered. And then I'm just going to grab this, scale one, and pull it back somewhere in there. Just roughing this out at this point. And then let's go ahead and draw our rent shapes. And I'm going to overdraw this a little bit. Again, with control points, you want to pull them farther than you think you need to and use less of them. And we could talk a little bit about whether this is a symmetrical object. If it is, then how should you do that? But I'm just going to kind of I'm just going to kind of follow the image. I'm not actually going to print this and put it on a on a nut, but we want it to be, you know, close enough for horseshoes and hand grenades. All right. So let's look at that kind of as a shape. I think I'm going to kind of buy off on that. And then these two obviously have to be parallel, so I'm going to start with I'm going to start with a center line actually and just really overdraw this. Pull out to there. And then I'm going to take Gumball and I'm going to use this little transformation waffle up here. I'm going to tap Alt and I'm going to drag it down here and place this. And the reason that I did that is because I know these two, I know these two edges are parallel now. Okay. And so now I need to deal with this. And I'm looking at the wrench here in my hand, which I do, and I have it in front of me just in case you're wondering. Um, it looks like the ends of this thing are actually dead flat. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a flat there and then draw a flat here. So now we've basically got the shape roughed out except for this, this transition in here. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to do that with a blend curve, which lives down here. And I'm going to blend these two ends together, but I'm going to pull them way up here. And then we may go curvature so that it gives us a little bit extra control. That way I can flatten this. We can really get that dialed in. To exactly the shape that we want. Maybe that needs to tighten up a little bit. And then I'm going to just use the trim function. I'm not going to bother joining it at this point because I've got a lot of other work to do, but I'm going to trim it. You can see that that just hacks it off. So this is the basis of our shape, right? So I'm going to grab everything and I'm going to use a tool called Curve Boolean. And Curve Boolean is cool because if I do this, let's delete all the inputs. Boop! It gives me the exterior shape. And if I click inside of stuff, I can add that. And then if I go click, it trims everything all at once. And I get my whole exterior shape with the exception of my two flats, which I missed. So let's put those back. And I'm going to just curve Boolean again and take these two pieces out. That's how I missed them last time. All right, so now I've got my exterior shape. I'm going to explode this for now, which again seems counterintuitive, but I'm going to go back and build my blends now. There's a there's a debate when you're building stuff, right? Do you build with sharp corners and then um do, 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 do. All right, so let's let's uh go back to this. I exploded this curve so that um these are all separate pieces, and then I'm going to use blend curve again, and I I'm not going to use my hotkeys. 
and let's go ahead and put the blends in here. I'm going to just do these to tangency. I don't need to go crazy with, with curvature. But you can see that I can adjust this to get that nice blendibular shape. It's a word I just made up. All right, let's just copy it over so we get our nice blends into there. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I am actually going to go, but I'm not going to trim this one because I want to keep this shape actually. So I'm not going to trim that one. And then I'm going to do this one as well. And then I'm going to do this one too because I'm going to use it later. All right. So now we've got the building blocks for everything that we need. And I may actually trim these pieces. Whoops. Got some history. See how that jumped? That's a that's a history thing. So I'm going to kill my history. I'm going to purge the history using the history purge command. Now if I trim these, because blend curve now has history on it, which is cool. See this? If I do this, and I do this, and then I blend between the two, and I move this one, it updates, which is cool. But if I trim this piece back, then I've changed the length of this line and then my, my blend jumps. So I have to use the history purge command in order to get rid of that. Or I need to simply come down here and suspend history as I'm working. I, I find it's easier. I have a hotkey set up for, for purging history. So I just roll, let history do its thing. And if it causes a problem, then I, I, um, I go back and, and just kill, I just undo, kill it, and then redo what I was doing again. So this piece is going to be separate. So I want to I want to break out this part of the curve down in here. So I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to actually I'm going to take this. I'm going to join them and then I'm going to split using these two curves. And what that should do is give me that curve <clears throat> and I can join that to this. And get a profile, which is kind of what I'm looking for to start with, because I'm going to just extrude this whole thing, right? So that's one exterior curve. And then I want this secondary little curve in here because I'm going to steal it for later. So let's grab this whole thing and let's just make a planar surface out of it to start with. And that'll be the basis of our model. And we can come in here and start adding our thickness. And in this case, I don't have calipers on me, but I'm going to just say this thing is about, I'm going to extrude this surface. And I'm going to say it's about, if I hold down shift, I can go in both directions. I'm going to say the handle is about eh, that thick. Okay. So I'm going to call it that. Now, some interesting things about this. The top surface of this actually has some crowns. So, and the side surfaces, are actually very narrow. So I'm actually going to undo that. I'm going to extrude it. I'm going to extrude it in the right direction. Come on now. Here we go. There. And I'm going to extrude it just a little bit because the flat on the side is actually very small. So I'm going to keep this surface. I'm going to work off of that surface. And then I'm going to add the rest of the stuff as needed. So now let's go back to the top. And then let's do this. Let's split this off. And I may have, I may be doing this too early, but let's let's give it a shot. So now I've got this as a separate piece, and this is a separate piece. And what I can do now is I can grab this and I can make it thicker, right? I can just scale it thicker. So that gives me my shape there. Right. I've got an opening here, which is fine for now, because I can always just loft that, and close it up if I need to, or two rail sweep it or do whatever I need to. But let's focus on the, the backside here. And this thing actually is flush on the top and it's bent. But if you look at the wrench, it's actually you could tell that this was actually forged flat. And then they heated the neck up and bent it. So we're going to make it the exact same way. But the top of this thing is flush with the handle and the bottom of it sticks out a little bit. So let's go back to the top view. <clears throat> let's go ahead and I'm going to draw a 
I probably should have kept that, but let's let's go and let's go from edge to edge here and let's draw a curve in here like this. And if I was being super precise, <clears throat> I would have um, done this as a as an arc, but we're gonna play a little fast and loose with the rules today. All right. Now this did not split. Do you see that? So I might have to go and do this on a face by face op process. So I'm going to explode this. And then I'm going to pick these faces and then split again. And that worked. So the reason it didn't work is because I had a slight, you know, discontinuity towards the edge where this maybe was either perfectly overlapping or not overlapping enough. But that's actually okay. It looks like it didn't like where it landed over here. But that's okay because I can actually, and the reason it, it looks like the reason it didn't like it because it was right exactly on a seam. So that's, Rhino doesn't necessarily like to do booleans or trims right exactly on a seam. So if your process falls right on a seam, you can, uh, you can, pull it apart and just go on a surface by surface basis. So let's join this back up. Let's go to the front view. And then I'm gonna just scale this in one direction. That would be a scale one. And I'm gonna just pull this down like, gotta get farther away from it. There we go. Pull it down to about there. And that gives us all the building blocks that we need to do to pull this thing off. <clears throat> So I'm going to just do a little housekeeping here. Let's go ahead and close this thing up. And I could simply just loft these two curves together. And I may be able to get away with that. But this gives me a seam right here, which may or may not cause me problems in the future. So let's pull this apart. Let's actually pull these surfaces out. And let's do it all as one piece. And we need to look at our edges first to make sure that we're going to get the result that we want. And if I turn edge analysis on, and by the way, edge analysis lives down here. Sorry, I hotkeyed that. It lives right here, show edges. You'll see that the edges of this thing are pink. These dots are breaks in the edge. So if I shift control click on the edge, you can see that the edge stops there. And I don't want that. So I'm going to come down here to edge tools again. And I'm going to go to this split merge edge tool and i'm going to right click to merge that edge and that edge now you can see the entire edge lights up which means if i do a two rail sweep i get one single surface now when i go to actually that's broken up into a poly surface i don't want that let's try lofting and i think it'll do a better job there we go that's one single surface so when i go to blend into this having having this blend you know into a single surface is going to be easier than trying to deal with the seams so we'll go ahead and join that back up and you can see that all the pink goes away no naked edges no non-manifold edges this thing's now solid and then i can mess with it at a later date i'm going to do the same thing down here i want this thing to be closed up on its own so this is this is what i refer to as modeling in chunks I like to model chunks of stuff that's that's um, solid, uh, watertight, so that as I'm as I'm building, I know that the model is is in good shape. Okay, so now if I lock between these, it should just get a single surface with a single seam, and that'll give me what I need to go. And if I need to move the seam, there's a command called surf seam. And I can grab this and I can just move it to a place where it's out of the way, like up here. Okay, that's cool, huh? Join it back up. That only works for closed surfaces like spheres and, and things that, that wrap back on. So, um, all right. So we've got that set up, this set up, and I think we're in pretty good shape now. So I'm gonna pull this down just a little bit because the crown of this surface kind of matches up to here. So let's go ahead and add that crown. I'm gonna pull this apart for now. 
And let's go ahead and add some crown to this thing. And I'm gonna do that simply by drawing a straight line. This is one of my favorite tricks for getting nice, smooth crown. This curve only has two points on it, but if I change the degree from one to three, look what happens. Oh, two more points show up. Not only do two more points show up, but two more points show up and they're perfectly spaced so that if I grab these and pull them, I know that I get a really nice, clean surface, right? Which is, which is cool, or a curve, which is cool. So let's go ahead and sweep that, two rail sweep. I'm gonna sweep it in this direction to start with. And that gives us our top profile. And this has got history on it, so if it, it needs to be more, I can just pull it more, which is a fun trick. And then I'm gonna pull the bottom of this thing off. And I'm just gonna mirror this surface because it's already done. Why do I why do I need to do it twice? Let's just do it once and steal it to the bottom. We know that it does what we want it to do, right? Not quite sure why that moved. Oh, because I moved it. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Uh, I mentioned that these are not, these are unrehearsed, right? <laughs> and the reason I don't rehearse them is not because I'm lazy, even though that's that's a valid that's a valid assumption, um, is because I want to run into the same problems that you're going to run into as you're building these models yourself. Um, so when I run into a roadblock, I want that to be a a good simulation of what you're going to run into so that I can show you how to get around it. Because the worst thing in the world is following a demo, getting stuck, not knowing why you're stuck, and then having to try and figure out how to get unstuck. So let's not do that. So I like to make the mistakes so you don't have to. So let's pull this down a little bit. I just drew a little reference line and I'm going to eyeball it. And I'm going to eyeball it just a hair low because I want to give myself just a little bit of room to blend into that. And I've got a nice situation setting up here, right? I've got one curve here, I've got one curve here, which I can I could blend into, right? And then I've got, uh, and we could even go ahead and do that. If I if I blended from this, this surface edge, which goes all the way around now, um, then you know I could do that. I could blend from here to here. Um, I don't want to go. I don't want to go the the entire length of this. So if I go from here to here, and then blend into that, and if I make two position, and then I make one tangency, and then we pull this back a little bit, and maybe that's too far. Maybe we need to come back in here like that. Although I'd like to be right in there. I'd like to be right in there as well. And then we're going to add a shape right down the middle to constrain this a little bit better. And that is our blend to here. Okay. And it looks like this this got a little tortured right here not in love with that so let's see let's see if we can do that a little differently so let's do let's do this let's break this out again which we made it not do this but let's make it do this again <laughs> one step forward one step back and then let's blend from this edge to here to that edge right let's make a curve there and then let's make another curve from here to here and then let's do a two rail sweep and see what we get this might be a little bit better way of doing this we'll see let's split this edge
here and here. Just like we can merge edges, we can split edges when it's useful to us. See, now we have, a, we have an edge piece that we can work from. Let's do a simple four-sided four surface. I like that better. I'm going to set my tangency to B. And then I'm going to add a slash through the center of this to make that a little bit better. And I like that. I like that a whole lot better. That basically is our transition from one side to the other. Now, I want to do the exact same thing, but I want to do it kind of halfway through the middle here. Don't need these now. Oops, history screwed me up again. So let's purge history. Now we can get rid of that. And then let's do our blend into this. Now, this piece, if I join this again, I've got a half an edge here, which is what I want. I'm going to just pull this up to about there, probably about there. And I have to decide, do I want to blend into this surface or do I want to blend into this edge? I think if I blend into this edge, what's going to happen is the curve is going to go way up here and then try and bend back over, which is not what I want. So let's pull an ISO curve and we'll blend to that instead. Let's blend to that ISO curve. So we just pulled the curve off of the surface that we're using to work from. Everybody still with me? Haven't, haven't lost anybody in the weeds just yet. So let's blend into that. And looks like I need to pull a second ISO curve because it didn't go all the way around. And I can snap to that end so I know it's in the right place. And then let's blend from here to here. And then I've got the same setup I had before, right? But this surface, make sure that that curve is one piece. And then if we do, but I've got a little bit different scenario where I kind of want this to blend in, right? So let's, let's see if we can pull that off. If not, there's another way we can do it, but let's see if we can pull it off in one shot. So I'm going to pull some more isoprams. So let's blend from here to here. And let's soften that a little bit. So we'll see if we can get this to happen. If it if it works, we'll be happy. This is a pretty tight corner to try and make it make it do its thing, but let's see, let's see what happens. I'm just as curious as you are. It's actually not bad. I think I'm gonna roll with that. So now we've got a perfect four-sided surface going right here. One, two, oop, got to join it first. See, this, this piece and this piece are still separate. So I'm going to kill my history so it doesn't screw me up. The command for that, by the way, is, is uh, history purge. And I've got that set up in a hotkey here um, under my aliases. You may want to do that. It, it's, it's useful, this one. Uh, history purge all. History purge space all is the command. I'll put that in the chat. So let's join all of this up. And then we should just have a simple four sided surface. I'm going to build off the surface edges instead of the curves. So I'm going to hide my curves. There, there, and that gives us, let's see what it looks like. That's not terrible. Now, I would like a little bit heavier blend down here, so maybe we'll work on that later. Maybe not. Maybe we'll just say that that's good. We'll see. We'll see how late it gets in the demo. <laughs> 
So we've got this end. All we have to do is add the bend to it. And we can do that really simply, but I'm going to do it at the very end because it's kind of a crowd pleaser. So I do want to center this though. So I'm going to take this stuff. I'm going to position my gumball right here using gumball relocate. And then I'm going to drag it down and snap it to the middle so I know it's right there. And if your gumball doesn't snap, there's a setting here, smooth dragging, snappy dragging. I like snappy dragging because it respects O snaps. And we're going to do the same thing kind of up here. I'm going to actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and use the exact same technique we did down here. I think that actually worked pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, which means I'm going to split this, even though I went took great pains to to not have this be separate pieces. I think I'm going to go ahead and make it back to being separate pieces. And then I'm going to blend. Now I've got a five-sided patch here if you if you look at this, right? I've got one if I if I keep this piece. So I'll probably delete these for now, but I'm going to just keep them for reference until I come up with a better plan. But let's blend from that surface to here. And then let's blend from this surface to here. And then let's do, I think we decided two rail sweep worked best for this. And if you see, if I try to do two rail sweep, see how it gets the entire thing. So I'm gonna join all this stuff back up. And when I join it, it's gonna automatically recognize that this is a separate edge. So I can use that for two rail sweep. I try to, I try to play that tool Let's add a slash. That just helps the isoprams find their way. And then let's do the same thing. Actually, that's centered, so we should be able to mirror that, right? Let's see. Let's see if we're, see how our karma, see how intact our karma is. Does this all join up? Oh. Looks like my modeling karma is in good shape, so that all worked. I don't know. Am I the only person that feels like when your model behaves itself, it's like a reward for being a good person? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I think about this stuff too much. <laughs> All righty. So we've got a, four, a beautiful four-sided setup here. So I'm just going to use surface from four input curves or four-sided surface or whatever that thing is called. What is that surface called? Edge surf. Let's use the right term. It's called edge surf. Let's use that one. And it lives up here. It's this one right here. And we'll join this up. Now, if we've done a good job, and it looks in this case I did, we have a closed poly surface now. And we've got a nice blend in here. In fact, if we go to rendered view, in fact, we can even make it look all metally. Let's make it look metally. Boop. And let's shut our edges off so that we can see what we're doing. And it doesn't update, so let's fix it here. It should update. Do, 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 do. We don't want. Still not updating. That's a little frustrating. All right. It shouldn't have edge curves on because it's not set to have edge curves on. For some reason, it still has edge curves on. Do, 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 do. All right. I will talk to the display people after this. I'll write a sternly worded email. Actually, I won't because they're super nice people. I'll just be like, hey, the thing doesn't work anymore. And they'll be like, cool, we'll fix it. All right, so we've got our wrench basically laid out, right? And we could get really deep into the woods and start like adding like little secondary fillets and stuff like that. But uh, with 15 minutes left to go, I'd like to go ahead and finish up the rest of the detailing and then we'll, we'll go from there. All right, so let's add the bend because that's fun. So this tool, uh, actually Rhino has a command and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make you like, you know, really, really wonder what the command name is. It's called bend. And if I just go like this, that's where the bend is going to happen. And I just go, 
do that. We did it exactly like they did it at the factory. And it just bends it. And it works fantastically, and I love it. But before we do that, actually, we need to finish this thing up. This has the 12 point sockets in it. And so, what I'm going to do is do a polygon with 12 sides. And I'm going to pull it out to here. And then I'm going to actually, it needs to be sorry, it needs to have 24 sides because I need two of those. Let's do it here. And actually, let's do it in like that. And you know, if I was making this for real, I would I would need to know exactly what the what the uh, methodology is of that. Let's turn the points on and then let's grab every other point. One, this one, this one, this one. Now we're gonna do a cool trick to get our points. I could draw this, you know, we could draw this, but it's more fun to go whoop. Right? That's more fun. Plus, you get to make cool sounds. And then we'll just extrude this out. And then on my wrench here, this is actually inset just a little bit. So I'm going to leave it high, but what I'm going to do is actually put a uh, let's build a let's build a cone. What's the easiest way to do this? Let's build a cone from the center. Let's snap it to this edge, and then let's pull it down just a little bit like that because the edges of this has a little chamfer on it. And let's get rid of this top surface by Control Shift Click Delete, and you can see that we can actually build that little chamfer. And if I grab this point. and pull it up or down, I can actually, should be able to modify this. I think I have to get all of them, there we go. I should be able to modify this either up or down and I can see how much chamfer I'm gonna get. So I think I, I think I wanted a little bit more than I originally designed. So let's throw like that much on it. And now let's go to the front view. So nothing that we're doing here is hard, right? I mean, it really, it's it's like, we've we've used like six tools. And I actually want this to go the other way. We haven't used anything really all that complicated. Gumball Relocate, I have a hotkey set up for it. You can get it from here. Do, 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 do. Oh, no, you can't, you have to get it from here. Relocate Gumball. If you click on the bunny tail and go relocate gumball, I have a I have a hockey setup for it, and I'll tell you what that one is because it's super useful. I use it all the time. Uh, it was, it was, there we go. Uh, gumball relocate. By the way, if you're setting your if you're setting up hotkeys, please make sure like take your hand, look at the back of your hand, look at the back of your left hand, take your pinky finger and stretch it to the left as far as you can, and then take your thumb and stretch it to the right as far as you can. Feel that strain on the back of your hand. Make sure that whatever hotkeys you set up, you're not doing that. Make your hotkeys super close so that you don't do that stress across the back of your hand. You'll get a really, really, really bad SRI and, and potentially put yourself in a situation where you have to get hand surgery. Uh, which you don't want. I've been doing this for a really, really long time, and I learned that lesson the hard way. Uh, so uh, let me let me serve as a warning to others. Don't do that. Make sure that your hotkeys are hand friendly. We're gonna trim, trim, and then trim that, and trim this, and then. We're going to join all of this up and it won't join to the body because we've got an inside surface here. So let's control shift, click delete, bring this back, join it up. All right, now let's bend it because it would have been much more difficult to model that without model it angled. So let's bend that. So now we've got our bend. And then we just need to add our top details and we are out of here. See, that wasn't too painful.
rounded rectangle. I'm going to set it right smack dab in the center. And I need to find where my center is. Cool thing about snappy dragging, since these are constrained up and down, I can go way over here. Actually, I need to go this way. Way over here. And I can find where my midpoint is and use that. And then I can just grab this and extrude, hold down shift. It should go both directions. It didn't because I picked the wrong one. There we go. It goes both directions. By the way, if you're buying tools, don't buy it with these stupid label setups in the middle. If you use them a lot, they'll tear your hands up. I don't like these little raised things. Uh, the, the nicer tools that I own don't have that little raised portion because all of this stuff just tears your hand up if you use them for a long time. But it makes for a less interesting model. So let's Boolean union, puts it all together. Let's throw a few little micro blends on this variable radius, and we're going to do chain. And we're going to make these very, very small. Very, 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 very small. Like that, like 0 0.006. Let me use set all. Knock that off. And then if I wanted to put a secondary fillet on this, there is a good chance that it's going to cross right here. Let's give it a shot and see. And it looks like, let's preview it and see. Yeah, see how this crosses right here? Chances are that is, is going to be an issue. So in order to fix that, I probably should have done this all at one time. So let's try it. Let's see if we can get it all in one time. And if not, then I'll show you how to model around that. And then let's chain edges, do that. Let's see if that'll do. And if it if it it looks like it's overlapping itself right there, so it's making a weird a weird thing there. So let's run it. And then you can see that it did it did a really good job, except for here, right? See how it got lost? So all we have to do is just dissect that. Rhino did exact, you know, everything that everything that else that we asked it for, except for this. So in this case, actually, when it would usually have failed, like most software will just will just die when you ask it to do this because it uh, crossing fill it like that, unless it's a Unless it's a solids program, all the SolidWorks people are going, well, SolidWorks will do that. Well, yeah, it's because it's built on a solids kernel, so settle down. Um, and then we just have to work out like this transition right here. Now, if we look at this, this has a little fingernail on it, right? And that is a little bit of a hassle to try and model around. And there's two ways that we can do this. We can either just simply trim using a curve and pick this as the curve and trim that one. Actually, I gotta pull it out first. And if you didn't know about this, this is the trim curve switch, which allows you to be able to trim a surface with the curve of another surface. And it doesn't like that. So what are we gonna do? Let's go to the top view. We have points laid out perfectly for us already, right? So let's do this. Let's just snap a point there, or snap a curve there, and snap a curve there. And then let's use these curves to trim these surfaces. Not all of them, just these. Too much, too much of the trimming. All right, let's grab just these guys and hide everything else. Helps if you actually just get the ones that you want. People are like, wow, he wasn't kidding about these being unrehearsed. No, I wasn't. <laughs> All righty. Live demo. All right, so let's get 
those pieces trimmed out and you can see that we have a nice little chunk here and a nice little chunk there let's join those up and then because i've got two edges here i can't really build properly off of that on its own like i couldn't do a four-sided patch and or a four-sided you know surface and just go through the whole thing so what i'd have to do is i'd have to either build a, a blend a, a, a a blend curve from this edge to this edge and make two four-sided patches, right? Which is fine. That's probably actually the way I do it. Or I would just duplicate these edges, join them into a single curve, and then two rail sweep this. That's actually probably the easiest way to do it. And now we get a nice double blend and it all joins up and all that stuff is wonderful, right? Let's put our metal back on there because it's cool looking. Now we can argue about continuity and all that kind of stuff, but if I hide these curves, actually if I could hide these edges, the edges would go away. And we can see this actually looks just fine. So that's probably how I'd address that. And I won't bore you by doing all four of those, but that's how you would do it. And then the last thing that we want to do is just try and address like how how much filleting and blending do we want to do on this? And I'm going to show you a cool trick uh, that I like to refer to as um, the um, um 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 and his name is escaping me at the moment. Um, Oh, I wanted to give him credit. Anyway, uh, one of our users has been around forever. He he had a um, he had a, uh, a video called Form versus Shape a long time ago that I learned a lot of things from. And one of these tricks was uh, a pipe trim. And so what I want to show you this, and I won't do the entire model because it's the same thing over and over again. But if I were to want to put a blend on say this edge okay this is a very complicated blend to try and figure out right mm -hmm. the fillet tool would probably fail on that but let's let's make a curve out of that let's make a curve out of this let's go to shaded mode let's try that again let's grab this and make a curve out of it not that one not you He's all like, can I play? We're like, no. And let's make a very tiny little pipe out of this. Come on, brain, remind me who's the name associated with this. Like 20 minutes after the video's over, I'll be like, I've got it. <laughs> People will be like, we're done, go away. I won't make you stay. All right, let's make a tiny little, tiny little, pipe here about about that big and we're going to just run it through the whole thing and then i'm going to use i'm going to knock the caps off the end of it because i didn't want those in the first place again control shift drag and then delete and then i'm going to use the extend tool which lives up here sorry i keep using my hotkeys and i'm going to extend this a little bit and this is this is like superpowers for for blending and stuff. Not gonna let me blend this one, huh? Not gonna let me extend this one. It's gonna be like that. All right. Let's pull that one out. It's got to be a surface, not a poly surface. It's got to not be a trimmed edge. Why are you trimmed? There we go. It had a teeny, teeny, tiny little trim on the end of it, which is why it wouldn't extend. It has to be an untrimmed surface in order for it to extend. So let's join this back up and then let's look at it. And we can see that what it does is it goes and it basically intersects the entire model, which is kind of cool because that allows us to do, I'm gonna take this surface off for right now 
it allows us to actually use that as a trimming object. And I'm going to trim a tiny little trough all the way around this entire model. Oh, it's making me crazy. I have to Google it. Hang on just a second. I want to make sure and credit the person who taught me how to do this. I'm going to feel dumb once I get it because this. Uh, uh, uh. James Carruthers. James Carruthers is his name. <laughs> and he's a super nice guy, and I'm really embarrassed that his name for his name slipped my mind. But James Carruthers is the guy who taught me a lot of stuff with his DVDs. So now what we've done is we've used this pipe trim, the James Carruthers pipe trim trick, right? And we have, I don't know whether he invented it, but he's the one that taught it to me, so I like to give him credit. And we've created a gap all the way around the model, which we can then use blend surface. And we're going to chain the edges, and it should come all the way around. Not so much on the chaining. That's OK. Oh, helps if you have auto chain on dirt. There we go. And then the second edge is up here. And it's shooting all the way around to here. And it comes all the way around to there. And then what we can do is put a little blend on that. Hooray, tangent, tangent. And I'm even gonna just soften it just a hair. There we go. And say, okay. And that allows us to do a really complicated blend that joins up beautifully that when we go into rendered mode has that, right? All the way around there. And if I could get rid of these stupid isograms, I'd be happy. Let's see if I can get rid of this. It's aggravating. Don't want those, don't want those. Do, 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 do. Still there. Rats. Okay. That'll be a conversation for a later date. <clears throat> Bring this surface back. All I have to do is trim this little nugget off on the end. And I'm going to use the curve trim. So trim. Now I'm going to type CRV and hit enter. And that allows me to be able to use this edge and trim that off and then join it up. And it joins up wonderfully. And see, we get that nice little edge on there. It could be bigger, smaller. And the cool thing about pipes is it <clears throat> is it is uh, it's um Kimi, do you know, do you know James? He's awesome. Um the uh the the cool thing about this is it's uh it's variable. So if I wanted it to be fatter here and skinnier here and then fatter back here and skinnier there, I could variable, I could do a variable on that entire thing which is really cool because then my blend could go in and out, in and out, in and out. So sometimes when fillet lets you down, that pipe trim will always work because you're basically, instead of modeling a surface, you're modeling a gap, and then you just fill the gap in with, um, with blend surface. Let's go ahead and throw it into ray trace mode. Let's save first because we've modeled for an hour without saving. And... If anybody happens to be, a, there's a TV show in the U.S. called Scrubs. Um, I know a lot of folks folks are joining us from overseas, but there's a, a show in the United States called Scrubs. It's a doctor show, and it has this one silly character who's a janitor, and he makes a tool called a knife wrench. I was actually going to model that, but I figured anybody that was overseas wouldn't know what that was. <laughs> so I think that was just crazy. But um, all right, so let's go to ray trace mode and take a peek at it. Hey, look, our isoprams disappeared finally. I don't know why, but now we can see how nice our blends and fillets and stuff are. 
Ooh, fantastic. And then if we go to ray trace mode, I wish I understood why it did that, but we can do a nice interactive render of this thing. And there's nothing more boring than watching a render res up. So this will be a good time to ask if there's any questions, comments, criticisms. Nobody's running for the door yet, so I haven't I haven't scared anybody. This kind of stuff is really tricky, you know, when you start getting into blends on top of blends on top of blends. And so what I would encourage you to do is to put your basic stuff together, right? We had, we got our major blends, our big pieces, we like to call these A surfaces. Actually, the A surfaces are the primaries. The B surfaces are the transitions between the primaries. And then the C surfaces, these little, these little things at the end, save those until the very end, and then try to do it with, with fillets and blends. If they work, great. If they don't, then that, that James Crothers pipe, pipe trim trick is a really fantastic way to decide exactly how you want this stuff all to flow together. And we could have done this like really super blendy if we wanted to. And then um, we could have blended the, this, this top surface, we could have blended that with the bottom surface so that it had like a nice blended profile and then blend into this and blend into that. And then at the end, all of the sharp ed edges, we could have duplicated the curve made a pipe trim and then do one global blend over the entire thing to get our little C transitions. And then the whole thing would have looked all creamy and, and, and beautiful. All right. So that's a, uh, that's a way to think about this kind of stuff as you're going forward, try to really break it down into its big, simple sheets, build the big, simple sheets first, then build the less simple, less bigger, but still big and kind of simple sheets. Does that make sense? <laughs> And then save the C's the, or the or the you know the final the C transitions the final ones to the very end, and then and then throw those in right before you know right before you get ready to ship the thing. The other thing that that'll help is say for instance if you skip the C's right and your first variation of this you go ahead and print it, and and you find that there's an issue and you need to fix it. Not having those those tertiary or third or C transitions in your model is going to make it a lot easier to edit. And then when you get, you know, as you go through your design revisions and stuff like that, and you get the thing the way that you want it, then and you're ready to ship it, then put your C's on, right? Or a lot of times what I do is my clients aren't necessarily accepting of that. They want to see the thing done. And so what I'll do is I'll save the model without the C's on it, without those tertiary third transitions. And I'll save that as the, this is the one when they come back and say, well, this needs to be bigger or smaller, it bends more, or this or that or the other thing. And I'll go back and I'll modify that one. So just set yourself up for success, understand that clients are fussy and they're gonna make changes. And so make sure that when you're building something like this, that could possibly, especially something that, that goes in the hand that's gonna have lots of iteration, in testing, hopefully, um, although they obviously didn't test this raised label because I've got blisters with names on with the with the name of this raised label on it. Um, but uh, as you go testing and re revising this stuff, you want to be able to to go back to a simple model that you can edit instead of having to go and untrim all that stuff and then retrim it, and then you start getting into this kind of cascade where you're chasing mess after mass after mass. So we want to try and avoid that. So set yourself up for, for success. As you go through the model, by the time I get through a model, I will usually have like, you know, I'll have a couple of layers down here, which will be like simple model, you know, mid model, you know, model without fillets, and then final model. And then I'll save that. And then I'll just ship the final model to the client. They'll test it and then they'll come back with changes. Well, then I go back to the simple model and fix it. And it's easy to do. So that's that's kind of my my advice to you as you're going that and make sure that you have a backup device because control S will save God may save your soul, but only control S will save your data. So <laughs> if that's the way you roll. All right. So make sure that you have backup devices. I have tech support calls all the time with students and they're like, I lost all my data. I'm like, where's your backup? I don't have a backup. Why don't you have a backup? <laughs> 
So, um, so that's it. That's all I have for you. Any other questions? Any other comments? Anything like that that you're interested in? Something that you saw that you didn't get the first time that you want me to repeat? Any questions about v6 in general or upcoming v7 if you own v6 please download v7 and give it a shot it has sub v's which are amazing and it also has uh, a new render engine based on cycles which is also amazing and several other wonderful little features here and there but sub v's and cycles are kind of the big big marquee features that are coming out so if you have v6 you can try v7 for free um, I told you I was going to tell you where the, um, uh, 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 let's see, this is where you get V7 right here, Discourse Serengeti. V7 is right here. If you click on this down here, this is where it is. Actually, I'll give you this one. Our YouTube channel is here. This is where this video will be later. And then our Vimeo is here. Let's see. Yes, this is our Vimeo. Wanted to make sure I wasn't getting somebody else's Vimeo. I was like, wow, this is a really cool page. It's ours. <laughs> this is where this stuff goes. This this getting started, all the getting started stuff is in here. So if you want to see it uh, later, it's here or on YouTube if you prefer YouTube. That's where it all is. Okay. Any other questions? If not, I will let you go. One hour, 11 minutes, start to finish with some talking. I think we're in good shape. Nothing? All right, fantastic. We do these about once a month. We do one for Mac, one for Windows. Keep an eye on the our trainings page. That's where you sign up for this stuff. It is here under Learn and On Demand, I think, live, live online. Where is it? I can't even find it. I think it's under Live Online. Getting started live. There we go. This is where you find it. So if you're if you have Rhino for Mac, the next one is going to be Thursday, May 28th. The next one of these is going to be Wednesday, May 27th. See you then. Go make great stuff. I'm Kyle Houchins. This is getting started. Rhino for Windows. Have a fantastic morning. Bye.